hardening off my plants. So I bought these plants through Azure Standard. I had started my seeds um, and I just feel like I started them way too early. So, um, and I, I followed like the farmer's almanac for our zone, we're zone nine here. And for some reason, I don't know, it was just way off, way early. So anyways, joining today. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me. I love sharing what I'm up to, my acquisitions, my future plans, some tutorials, etc. Um, if you like what you see here today, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. It really does help me out a lot. So you can find me over on Instagram at Back Porch Fiber Co. Um, you can find me on Etsy at my shop name is also Back Porch Fiber Co. Um, go check out some fun notions, stitch markers, progress keepers, scissors, um, darning needles, all kinds of stuff over there. So if you are in the need or just want to have a look, go on over there. Um, yeah, so let's get started today. So I was thinking that maybe we should do a little bit reset of a reset on the podcast. Um, it's been really hard for me to keep up on the once a month. And the reason for that is because I feel like after a month has gone by, it's hard for me to keep track of like what I've shown you guys, what I haven't. And then some projects are just kind of long gone by then too. And so I feel like this sounds counter counterintuitive, but I'm actually going to post every two weeks. We're going to try it. Um, I'm going to kind of commit to the summer. So we're almost going into summer um, as far as like the school year goes. So I'm going to commit to that doing every other week um, podcasts. And what I'm hoping that that'll do is just keep it fresh in my mind so that it's easier to share with you guys. I love sharing with you, but like after that month has gone by, sometimes I just feel like, oh, it's just so much work to pull everything. Um, try to remember what I've done in that last month, etc. So I'm just hoping that that just doing in a two week span would hopefully streamline things, um, make it easier to share because it's more on the front of my mind. And then I was also thinking about adding in some, um, some vlogging as well, kind of like Vlogmas, but just over the summer. So just kind of what we're doing day to day. There won't be a lot of that, but, um, just to kind of spice it up and then keep like this sit down content. Um, I'm hoping to like a 15, 20 minute sit down. Could be less, could be more just depending. But tonight, today might be long. I'm not so sure. We'll see. Okay. So let's start. I just have two finished objects. And again, it's because, so the last episodes that I did were finished object episodes. I was working down my wits. I got so many things done and I kind of don't know what all I showed you guys, what I didn't show you guys. I could go back and watch for sure. Um, but I have this short window to film and I just want to take advantage of it. So I'm pretty sure that you guys have not seen this shirt here that I'm wearing. It is the painting sweater by Caitlin. Katrine Schneider, I believe. Um, and it's a woolberry yarn. Um, it was a, uh, for her summer road trip colorways. That's what this was. I actually won a giveaway and got three skeins. Like it was like a hundred dollar gift certificate. So I was able to get enough for this sweater. So if you had followed me through the, um, the whips work down, you will have heard the drama with this yarn. So, um, we were dealing with um, what are they called? Carpet beetles. 
They're just these little tiny, tiny little things, but they love to eat yarn. And so I had had this one sitting in a basket on my carpet and that was like the perfect harboring spot for them. So this yarn just had a whole bunch of little munchies in it. Um, it was super hard to work through, but I got to the point where I didn't want to frog it and I didn't like, but it was so hard to finish it that I didn't really want to finish it either. <laughs> Um, so when I did my working down my whips in January, it really gave me that momentum and that motivation to get it done. So I modified it a little bit. I made it not too cropped. I tried to go as long as I could. So this is kind of where it sits on me. And then I did take off the sleeves. So I didn't do the sleeves and, um, I just did a, like an I cord edging on the sleeves and I love it. I have this newfound love for knitted tees. I have like four other ones that I swear I want to knit because they are just, they seem so fun. And then you're like, okay, you're done with the sleeves. There, there are no sleeves or they're super little sleeves. And that's really appealing to me right now. I don't know why, but anyways, and there's so many new patterns and I don't know if these are just new to me patterns. Maybe things are just kind of popping up more on my feed because I'm all of a sudden interested in these tees. And so I'm seeing more of it. Um, or if more designers are just designing tees, knitted tees out there. Either way, I'm loving this trend right now and I cannot wait to cast some on and I'll show you one that I have plans and yarn to cast on soon. So this is done. Super excited to have this done and I love wearing it. It's super comfortable. Like I love the yarn. It's just a fun summer tee. So the other thing that I have to show you guys is this shawl here. This is the um, Study and Texture Shawl by the Knitting Primate. It, it was so fun to knit, you guys. There's so much fun texture in this. Um, like you, so you start here. It's not a garter tab cast on because you are doing this little cable guy here. I, I forget the cast on, but then, so basically you're working here and increasing your stitches as you go. Um, it has this beautiful cable edging, which was so fun to knit. I thought it would be really hard, but it's not at all. But you do that through the entire thing. And then your textures change throughout the entire, um, project and it just made it so interesting so fun to knit on so this is um emma's yarn in the wish you were beer colorway is this like barley kind of color and then this gray is nailed it i got this yarn at um stitches west many years ago and it was just sitting in my stash waiting for the perfect project and i felt like this was kind of it um, I knew I didn't have quite enough yarn in the Wish You Were Beer colorway. Um, and I had bought this like for a sweater. I was gonna like maybe stripe in this nailed it um, colorway and I just didn't get around to it. So when my knitting group, we I knit with five other ladies on Friday and we all knit together, but we were doing this knit along for this shawl. And um, so I don't know, I just, I loved this color. It was an opportunity to use down some of my stash and I love how the texture just pops with this color. It is gorgeous. So super fun pattern. There were some, um, and I had an older set of this pattern, so I don't know if it's been changed, but the, um, the seed stitch pattern is incorrect in the pattern. Um, it, does it, it wouldn't quite turn out as a seed stitch if you did it in her pattern, but just knowing how a seed stitch is supposed to work, you know, you're supposed to knit the pearls and purl the knits. I just switched that. But um, if you do this pattern, just note that, that the seed stitch pattern is incorrect in there, or at least it was on the pattern that I had, but it was an older pattern. So hopefully she's fixed that by now. I'm not too sure, but anyways fun, fun project. And it's a good size too. It drapes nicely. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. 
So those are my two finished objects right here. Let's move on to works in progress. And I have quite a few works in progress to show you guys. All right, I really don't even know where to start, but let's see, I'm gonna start with a pair of socks. Okay, so I've not done much sock knitting lately. And I just kind of wanted to cast one on, wanted to use up some stash yarn. And so I just kind of randomly grabbed this guy here. Um, this is wool and vinyl in static noise, I think is the colorway. I don't think I have the ball band here. I do not. So it's this one here. I got this yarn in New Orleans when I was visiting my friend Annie. So she lives in Texas. We drove to New Orleans together a few years back um, and visited some yarn shops and just had a good time out down there. But um, yeah, so this is my vanilla sock with some modifications. So I did, ironically, like I bought this yarn, which is from Wool and Vinyl or Vinyl, Wool and Vinyl. Yeah. And um then I got home and I opened up my, my, yeah, hmm, I'm having trouble with words today. <laughs> I opened up my row one subscription and ironically, my row one subscription that month was from wool and vinyl and the colors matched so perfectly. I actually got this color in the, um, the 10 little minis, but then I also got this guy here. Um, I have no idea what this color is. Let's see if it got one little guy I don't know I'm not so sure but this matches so well with this so fun um, and I think this one was not wool and vinyl I think it was maybe this one is um, dinner at Tiffany's from Threadhead Knits it was another row one so I used these guys um, just to spice up my sock a little bit so I'll tell you how I did it so I um, knit, I cast on with this pink guy here, and then I did two rows of one by one combination knitting. And what the combination knitting is, is you knit one, and then on the purl, you, that first row, you're purling through the front loop, just like normal. But when you wrap your yarn, you go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Um, and then on that second row, because that kind of twists the, you, it's gonna twist your legs. Your right, your right leg will be in the back, if that makes sense. Kind of weird. Um, but then you have to actually go through that back loop as if it's the front loop, and then, but you, so you, purl through the back loop, and still wrap your yarn clockwise. And what that is supposed to do is it's just supposed to give you a little bit of a tighter ribbed cuff. Um, I like it. I kind of like knitting that way, but it also, I think, in my opinion, it really defines my stitches better for my cuff. And I worked 25 rows of that cuff. Um, I cannot remember how many stitches I worked for the leg or how many rows. I cast on 56 and I'm using a nine inch circular Chowgu Zero because my gauge is quite a bit um, looser when I knit with the nine inch circular. So I went down to a zero. I normally do a one. Um, I don't know. This is probably like 50, 55 rows or so. And then I did the, um, eye of partridge heel that is specified in the Hermione's everyday socks. So I did that. And then I think I knit 10 rows. So there's my little marker for the end of my heel. And then I, did a knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one um, on this heel section here. And that I did with this, um, this other accent yarn. And it's really hard to see in there, but like you can. But what I wanted is I wanted to try to find a recipe that I could, um, like that would just hug the arch of my foot so that hopefully they, my socks wouldn't fall down as much. I wear my socks a lot in like my Uggs and stuff like that. And so they just tend to fall down a little bit more. So that was my hope. And then I just did a um, rounded toe 
And when I started doing like my, how I do my rounded toe is I usually will do a decrease round, knit three, decrease round, knit two, decrease round, knit one, and then decrease every one from there. So I, once I started every decrease, that's when I added back a little bit of the pink up at the toe. So this one is finished, but I, it's a work in progress because here's my other one. And I am so motivated to work on this right now because I have another cast on that I really, really want to cast on. And we'll talk about that in future plans. But yeah, so this one is flying off the needles. Just yesterday, I was right here. I had like four rows on my cuff left um, is where I started working on this yesterday. And then I've just done a couple rows today. So I flew on this yesterday. Amazing how fast you can knit something when you're motivated to cast on another project. Who is with me? <laughs> All right, so that's that one. And I'll just say right now too, like my needles, I know I'm bad at like sharing needle sizes. I always use Chowgu needles um, for socks. I do nine inch circular zeros um, or double points in a one or a magic loop in a one. So that's, if I'm showing you socks, that's how they're getting done there. Okay, the next work in progress here is I went to a local yarn shop in um, Sonoma and I, I can't remember the name of it. I will put the name down here on the, the bottom, but super, super cute yarn shop. It's this little tiny, tiny, tiny yarn shop. Like, you know, to get past people, you kind of have to like shimmy across. But I think real estate in Sonoma is just through the roof, so I totally get why it needs to be a small place. And it's super cute. They have utilized it really well. But anyway, so I saw this lady and she was wearing this um, very like lacy sheer sweater. Um, and it's called Phantom Fuzz um, by Park and Knit. And here's my best picture of it. Now, I think hers was like a dark plum color. So there's that, and then I think I can show you this one too. It is a paid for pattern, so don't wanna give anything away, but um, so my idea for this, I, I kinda liked it. I don't typically knit with large needles and lace weight yarn, like that combination. It just doesn't feel very great in my hands, but I kinda wanted to give it a try. And in my head, and again, this is, I love this about knitting, is that like, there's just so many possibilities, right? You can take something, something that you see here, something that you see there, mix it together to form something new. And so what I did is um, I decided to make a swimsuit cover up with this pattern, not with mohair like the pattern calls, because I think that would be pretty yucky <laughs> to, I don't know what mohair, just that doesn't, sound appealing to me. So, um, but I wanted to make a swimsuit cover up. My, we have some friends who are, have just recently retired and they're going to Hawaii for a month and they are inviting friends and family to come for different weeks of the month that they're there and they invited us to come. So I'm super excited about that. We're headed out in six weeks or so. I don't know, somewhere in there, June, July. Um, anyways, so I thought it would be so fun to um, grab some linen or cotton yarn to work on this project. So I, and I'm modifying it a ton. So we'll talk about that too. Okay, so this is the yarn that I got. It is a linen cotton blend. It came in a cone and I think it's kind of for weaving, but it was, 600 yards for in four ounces. So I think four ounces is about 125, 130 grams, I think. So 600 yards for that. Um, and it's, I chose a color that would match all my swimsuits that I have. So it's just like a neutral, um, like a sandy kind of color, I guess. Um, okay, so here's how I modified it. It's, you start at the bottom, you do an I-cord bottom here. I did a split hem, so I worked the front, I worked the back, and then I joined them together. 
Um, and then I'm making it extra long to hit like my thigh, my upper thigh, kind of like just to kind of cover, you know, everything. And so I did the split hem because I figured with it sitting on my thigh and that being a wider point in my body that it wouldn't stretch or look funny. It would just have more give. I am at the point on this where I've knit the back and I'm getting ready to knit the front. So it, it looks really, really wonky actually because, here we go, because the front is nine and a half inch longer than the back or vice versa. The back is longer. But so this is the back. I don't think I have much more up at the top here. I think I'm about done and ready to work on the front. But this is what it will be like, um, kind of like sitting like this. It is super sheer. So it's a size 10 needle, Chowgu 10 on the super fine yarn. And I think when I block it, it'll just relax and soften up and just be very airy and open. Um, and then I'm also not gonna do the sleeves like the picture has here. So I don't know if, so for the sleeve opening, like when you're doing the back of it, I did a slip stitch on the edge just to give it a really nice edge in case I don't do anything else with it. I may do an I-cord edge on the, around um, the sleeve as it calls for like to go around the wrist, but I'm not sure yet. I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear. But I bought the pattern because I've really never worked with this much or this yarn combination with the needles. And so I really wanted a starting point, which is why I bought the pattern. And then um, also I thought it would be, since I'm gonna keep like the top, the V-neck and the top the same, I thought the instructions for that would be great as well. Cause I've, I have done it before, but not with this yarn combination. And it's been a long time. I'm not that fluid in it. So um, while I am making a lot of modifications, I'm still using the pattern. It's an easy to follow pattern, super, super fun. And who knows, I may make another one out of mohair someday, but yeah, so this should be done fairly soon because um, yeah, we're leaving in a little bit. So, and I just wanna make sure it all works out. But I also didn't, wasn't sure if I was going to have enough yarn, but I definitely do. I think before I split, I still have more than half from uh, like after I just did the body part. I still had more than half of the skin of yarn. So that's it. So the Phantom Fuzz by, by Park Williams, who is Park in it. Super, super fun. And this is really stretching me because again, like I'm at the point like knitting on the knit sides right now is because you're knitting back and forth right now. So the knit sides, totally easy and fun. I can do that very quickly, but on the purl side, it just does not feel very natural to me at all. And so I just feel like those purl rows take a long time. So I'm just kind of giving myself a short goal every day just to keep working on that. But anyways, super fun project. I'll let you, let you guys know how it turns out, if it actually works or not, but we'll see. Okay, the next one. And I wanna talk about this one for a little bit. So. This is the Alignment Throw by Heidi and Lana Margaret. I love this blanket. It is really fun to work on. It's like an intarsia style knitting. Um, so I wanna show you two things. So I am doing her DK version and I'm holding her minis that I get from her Patreon um, tier three, I think. I think it's tier three. Um, so it's a Patreon mini and so I get the mini, a stitch marker, and then I get to do her knit and chat, which I'm really loving her knit and chat. I've done it a couple times now. And so I'm holding her minis double and then I just have a bare yarn because I have dyed yarn in the past. There's still yarn up on my Etsy shop. Um, but I just had this bare yarn and I love the color of it. That's, I feel like that's probably what she did here. Um, I don't know if it's bare or if it's lightly dyed, but anyways. So the pattern calls for 25 grams of the DK yarn. So I'm like, okay, like I'll just do one less row here and hopefully that'll be 
sufficient, right? So it is a paid for pattern. So I'm gonna talk about it, but I don't wanna give away her numbers and her schematics and all of that. So, um, but basically what you do is you are, you have two balls of this, of your base color, and then one of your contrast color. And so you're knitting here, and then you're doing this little intarsia twist thing, and then you're knitting across, and then your third skein of, you pick back up over here. So this is what it looks like on the back. Super fun. So my idea of just doing one less repeat here worked beautifully all the way up to this one here. And I did have enough here, but it was like I had that much left, like literally just enough to weave in my ends. And that was it. I'm like, oh, yikes. Okay. And then I get to this one. I did not have enough. And so my friend had a little bit extra from her skein that she had. So she sent me like two extra yards, which is all I needed. And it worked, but I'm just thinking like, I'm not, I don't want to play yarn chicken every month. That is not a fun place to be. And I don't want to take my friend's yarn every month and have her have to send it to me, etc. So I redid it. I chose a skein of her, of Heidi and Lana's that was like the smallest skein that I had, which is right around 20 grams, maybe a little over 21 or a little over, like just right at 21. And I'm like, I'm going to try it again. So I started another strip and I did um, one less of everything that she said. So for the stitch count here, I did one stitch less, one stitch less, one stitch less, one row less, one row less, one row less. Um, and that worked. I have, um, I had this much left. And it was, again, it was like the smallest skein that I have. So when I do have those bigger skeins, I it, it will work. But even on those small skeins, I know that it will work again. So now this is my starting point and I'm going to have to take all of this out. And I'm a little bit bummed because I like the look of the bigger um, crosses. But it's fine. It's fine. For peace of mind and not having to deal with it every month like that worry, it's fine. Um, and she does have a fingering weight version that I could have done with these because her fingering weight version just calls for 20 gram minis. Um, but I just liked the quickness of this. So I work on this project um, when my son and I do our readers together. We homeschool him and He's 14, he's in high school, but the curriculum that we use, we still read out loud together. I think this will probably be the last year that we do it. And so we take turns reading and um, I can knit on this while I'm reading or while he's reading. And then when we read our Bible in the morning, same thing, I can knit on this. And so this is my project that I really only work on when we're reading together, which is kind of a fun project. And I feel like with the Patreon minis, it um, it takes me about a month to do a little section here, sometimes more, but I do have some extra skeins to work with too. So I have some catch up to do on that. Um, this one here, I'll show you guys, is sporting one of my stitch markers. I do a lot of these like uh, resin, wood, stitch markers, progress keepers. So got that there. Yeah, so that is my alignment throw. I'm loving it. This is the... Um, Heidi and Lana's April Patreon. I love this color, it's my favorite one yet. I love it, love it, love it. Super fun. Okay, my last work in progress. I feel like this podcast is gonna go a lot longer than I was intending, but it's okay. We're catching up, we're resetting, it's good. Okay. So, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about this project. So I'm knitting this project for my daughter. She just got married in March and it's a housewarming gift. And um, so I picked out the colors thinking that she would like them. And then I went and saw her new house and it just, I wasn't sure it was gonna work. And so I got discouraged. I didn't work on it for a bit. 
And then she was talking about like getting some curtains and a bedspread for her room because they share a house with um, another couple. That's just kind of how it is in California. Like right now, just rent housing is just really pricey kind of everywhere. And um, it's not like when I was a kid <laughs> or newly married. Yeah, so that's a whole nother topic. But anyways, so... Um, so she was telling me about her room and telling me that like their bedspread was brown and they were getting some like um, olive green curtains for their um, windows and everything and that just gave me all the motivation that I needed and here's why. Let's see. gorgeous you guys this is the coast coastline sunburst hexi and it is oh I forget who made it I do not have that information here I'll put it in the screen I'm so sorry you guys okay so coastline sunburst hexi I am using wool of the andes knit picks yarn um yeah, so once she was talking about the greens and the browns, I'm like, okay, yes, I wasn't far off. Like, I do know her, <laughs> but um, I think I have two and a half rows left maybe to go on this. Um, so I have some more hexes to make. So you make these little hexes, like they and they they start out as circles, but then once you crochet them together, they become a hexagon. So super fun. Um, I'll go over the colors too, but this is the, it's a hundred percent Peruvian wool. I thought I was actually getting her something that she could throw in the wash. Um, but I think that's the Swish yarn, not the wool of the Andes, but I think it'll still be all right. I'm okay with it. But anyway, so this is a free pattern on the blog. Um, again, I'll put all the information below and in the notes, but, um, or you can do a paid for printed version. So when I do it, when I do things like that, like I just kind of cut and paste into a document and still am able to print it out so I don't have to keep going through all the ads and everything. Um, and then sometimes I will just go ahead and purchase the pattern to support the makers. So anyways, um, so I've not posted this, any anything about this on Instagram yet because I don't want my daughter to see it for one. But then also I am feeling very led to do a prayer project, um, ministry, prayer project, knit along, prayer project, encouragement group. I don't know. I don't know what to call it yet, but I'm feeling led to do this. Um, if you followed me for any amount of time, you'll know that I am a Christian and um, I feel like you know, it's not a Sunday morning thing. It's a how we live our life every single day, every moment of the day. And um, I'm feeling convicted to bring that more to Back Porch Fiber Co. Because it is, it's, it is, it, it's in my every part of my life. And um, so I'm actually going to start that out by doing um, a prayer project for newlyweds. So the idea behind this is that I will have like highlights and whatnot on how to pray for people who are grieving, who are newly married, um, maybe they're new moms or um, I don't like anything. Maybe they're maybe they deal with anxiety. Um, so if you're not familiar with how pro prayer project works, or a lot of people call it a prayer shawl, but I think that really you could do this for any project at all. Um, the idea behind it is that you are praying for the recipient of your project as you are knitting or crocheting it, as you're working through it. And um, I love this idea and I naturally do this. I gave my sister-in-law a, um, a shawl. I made a half and half wrap for her. And every time I picked it up, I would think about her and um, just think about times that we shared together. I'd pray for her and that kind of thing. And um, so really it could be any project at all, but like what a blessing for us and a blessing for the recipient to be able to pray for them as we are making something for them. Um, and then I would also like to have basically like, um, like a list, right? That you guys could print out 
and give to the recipient, wrap it up all together like, hey, this is how I've been praying for you specifically. And the prayer prompts are little, it's just to help get you started. So, you know, it might just be like one sentence of something that you could pray for them on that day at that moment. Um, but obviously like pray however you want. It's just there if you need ideas, you know, on how you could pray for somebody in that specific situation. So I'm going to kick it off with newlyweds because that's where I'm at in my life and what better way to just kind of mesh all my worlds together. So, um, yeah, so you will see I have been working on, I have the prayer prompts done and I'm just working on this project and um, getting this done so that we can launch that as well. But I am loving this project. Let me tell you guys the colors too. All right, so we have Crane Heather, which I think is this guy here. Um, we have Almond which is this one here and camel heather which is this one chestnut the darker brown and um what's this other one larch heather and then it is all crocheted together with um oyster heather all wool of the Andes knit picks. So I did the same scheme, color scheme that the original came in, except for I changed out her like blue. It's like this smoky blue color for the green because that fit my daughter better. But, um, and I really, really love how she crocheted these together. And I don't know if it was her idea, if it was, if she got it from somewhere else. So I have done another blanket like this that crocheted as you go. So you do the little hexes and then like I kind of get a row's worth done and then I do the whole row together. And um, so how I did it before though, there were like large gaps here in the, um, in the seaming and that it was supposed to be like that. It wasn't something that I did wrong. It was supposed to be like that. But how this is joined together is she's actually slip stitching in between every double crochet which then gives it like this braided feel, like a twisted braid. I don't know, it's gorgeous. I really like it and there aren't those holes in between it either. So super easy to memorize. The tutorials that are um, that come with this are phenomenal. She just like super beginner friendly. And as she's explaining, especially like this crochet as you go piece of it, um, she's like engaging you as well through her tutorials and so that you can remember and she's giving you the tools to remember so you don't have to be looking at the video the entire time so i really really found that helpful um but like i said i think i've got two more rows left i mean this thing called for a ton of skeins so let's see and there are 50 gram skeins so let's see like 10 20 20 so 36 skeins of yarn <laughs> it's huge but again, 50 gram skeins and it's worsted weight. So that makes sense, but it's going to be massive when I'm done with it. I am super excited about it. I am, oh, you know what? The other thing that I should share with you guys is that I am using these tulip needles in a size H, it's a five millimeter. I didn't have the size, so I bought a set on Amazon and it was total garbage, not this, these are spectacular but um I'm like oh I don't need expensive knitting or crochet hooks like it's fine it was not fine not fine I'm like it the way that like the silicone on here like kind of seamed up not on this one again this is the one I just returned them um but like from the mold and everything it was just not good it rubbed on my finger like right where I held it and I'm thinking like an entire blanket that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So I just bit the bullet and bought a set of the tulip crochet hooks and I'm never going back. I love them. They they work for my hands ergonomically. I'm sure if you knit or if you crochet differently, it may not work, but I love them. Love them. Love them. Love them. Okay. 
Um, all right, that's it for finished off or for works in progress. So I wanted to talk now about some future knitting plans. Okay, future knitting plans. The, I want to make, um, so I'm trying to work so quickly through my socks because I want to cast on another pair of socks. Heidi and Lana just came out with her sprig sock and I'm super excited to cast that on. I'll post a picture of it here. Um, but it's a no-show sock with some eyelet details and like this little, it kind of looks like a pico edging up at the cuff. Super, super pretty. So when I was talking with her in the Patreon knit and chat, I've made a pair before and they just didn't quite work for my foot. And, but everybody talks about these sprigs or the, they're like her journey socks. So sprig is a new version of her journey sock. Um, journey is like a, a vanilla sock that like a vanilla no-show sock basically. And um, so everybody talks about these, how great they are, that they stay on their feet. Like finally a no-show sock that stays on my feet. And that was not the case for me, but I'm a little bit determined to find a formula that works for me. So when I, I was picking um, Margaret's brain at, on our last knit and chat and she gave some really good tips. So I'm gonna share those with you guys. Um, first of all, she said to make sure that you give yourself that three inches before you start the toe, which I usually give about an inch and a half before I start the toe, maybe two inches. Um, but she said, three inches because you need that negative length basically to hold on tight to your foot. Um, so I'm going to try that. She also said block it before you wear it. And I'm not a sock blocker person. I, I don't know, like I throw them in the wash and then just hang them up to dry. I don't block my socks, even just brand new. I don't block them, but, um, she said that it made a huge difference. So those two things I'm gonna try. Um, and then she was super sweet and she said like, if this doesn't work for you, like I have some more ideas and we'll talk about it. So really excited to start those. I don't know which yarn I'm gonna use, but I'll find something in my stash. I can't imagine it's gonna take more than 30, 40 grams of yarn. So I could probably even do some leftovers. I don't know. Okay, so Sprig Socks, super excited. Super, super excited about that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I really want to make some more teas for the summer. And I have a ton of um, like sweater knitting plans in my head, but they're kind of going on hold until I do some teas. So this purple Coke pattern by um, Katrine Schneider. I love this love this pattern. Uh, let's see if I can find another. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that was probably the better picture of it. So it looks striped, but the stripes are created by dropping yarn and picking up yarn. So I'm going to show you an acquisition before we get to acquisitions because it'll just go over better. So give me a second. Okay, I keep all my yarn in jars like this or the majority of my yarn because of that carpet, carpet beetle prod problem. Um, so it helps to keep critters out, but yet I can still see it. I don't wanna put them in plastic bins or in bags and whatnot, so I can't even see it, but I love this idea. So these were like three bucks at Target a while back. Okay, so this is, um, the ITO yarn and it's 100% silk and it is in um, cayenne red. It's the Kainu, Kinu, Kainu, ITO. And then you pair it with the Sensei, which is mohair silk. So this is the pair that I am gonna be doing. Super fun. So throughout the sweater, you hold these two double. And then when you come across a like where you want to put a stripe, you drop this guy and only knit with the mohair. Isn't that so fun? I love this idea. Um, 
Okay, so here we go. So I bought this, I bought this yarn when I was doing the yarn crawl with my friend. Um, I bought it at Castaway in Santa Rosa. Wasn't too sure what I was gonna do with it. I just wanted to work with it. I don't know. Um, but I figured like I would probably do a top something. And I even considered using this for the um, swimsuit cover up. But anyways, then I went to Stitches West and they had this top out in this color palette. It was so perfect. So, so perfect. So snatched the mohair that was used um, at Stitches and I cannot wait to cast this project on. But I'm trying to get through if I can get through this blanket, I'll cast that, that one on. But anyway, so acquisition and future project. I cannot wait. I do think it's gonna knit up really quickly. Um, let me see what needle size. It's a US two and a 2.5 needle. So I don't know, it is thin, but I think it might agree with my hands more than the US 10 needle with the fingering weight yarn. Love, 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 love. Okay, I am going to reset here and get in all my acquisitions because I have so many acquisitions from the yarn crawl and stitches and I also would really like to get some coasters and dish towels and all that kind of stuff done. So I bought some cotton yarn that I'll share with you guys too, but I'm gonna reset and I'll be right back. start with cotton and work my way out. So I got this guy here. Um, it's like a cotton, it says roving, but I think a lot of people use it for weaving. Again, I just like to be different, but I found this at Stitches and I don't have the person's um, card with me anymore, which I'm pretty bummed about because I could totally see myself getting more of this. But I just kind of thought that maybe like I could knit up some baby blankets. I may even do like a cotton tank, maybe like a little v-neck tank. I don't know. This is so fun, you guys. <laughs> this is like literally 2,000 yards of cotton yarn. And I forget what this is called, like maybe a rambolet maybe, or, or I forget. But it, it's kind of like crimped a little bit. So I picked this up. I literally like I had bought only that mohair from Stitches and I'm just like walking around like haven't bought anything and it had been like an hour and a half um, but just previously I had gone to like I had done this yarn crawl with my friend so I was I didn't feel like I had to have something right well I come across this booth and they have all this cotton yarn I touched it and I touched the blanket that they made out of it and I just had to have it and I think it was like 30 bucks or something for all this yarn it was amazing but it's so soft, like the softest cotton I've ever ever felt um yeah like isn't that cool so fun i think like i don't even know what exactly i'm gonna do with this and that's not usually how i buy yarn i have things in mind but i don't like i just couldn't pass it up it was so fun so there's that okay more cotton yarn and this is gonna be a little bit crunchy so my apologies we'll fast forward get through the crunchies Nitpix was having their dishy sale. He was like 20% off. And then they had like another 20% off or 10% or something like that for the weekend that I bought it. So I kind of went all out and bought a whole bunch of dishy yarn. Loving the, um, a lot of the washcloths that people are buying right now or making right now. So I really wanted like this swan color yarn and then just wanted to pair it. Um, Heidi and Lana has an essentials pattern that I am loving right now. Cannot wait to cast some of those on, but I just, I love this color palette. Well, Knit Picks was out of the Swan. I think that's what it's called, Swan, yeah. But my friend Annie found some, some on a D stash, so she picked it up for me. So I have that, but what I was going to use is this, um, 
what is it called? Silver. So I was just gonna use this silver. I hope you guys can see that. Um, okay, more crunchy, sorry. So silver instead of the swan, which I think looks great too. So I'll probably do some of all of this, but we have inlet, we have creme brulee, silver. Um, what is this one called? Sun baked clay. I also got ash as well, but I'm loaning it out to my stepmom. Coffee. And mushroom. Yeah, and then that's it for the dishy. So, like, I don't know. This is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it goes. There she blew. So washcloths, I want to make some coasters. I made some coasters. That was also a finished object, but I gave them to a friend for her birthday. So I'll pop a picture of those in too. But um, basically it was a linen stitch little coaster. And then I wove in the accent colors, the contrast colors. So those are super fun. I'll post a picture, like I said. Um, if you need a recipe for that, message below and I can send you out a recipe. I'm not a crocheter. I don't like... I am a crocheter and I did crochet them, but I'm not proficient enough to create a pattern or anything like that, but I can just tell you what I did simply. So there's that. Okay, next, I think I'll save the best for last. So, <laughs> okay, so I got this, my friend was doing a D stash and I love this color. It's called Burrow, it's a woolberry. Fiber Co. I think it's it's probably an old one. I don't know, but it's a Tweety yarn. I loved it. It was so fun. And I when I originally saw it, I thought like, oh, that'll be a great um, neutral for my husband. But once getting it, and she even kind of showed me some more pictures, there is quite a bit of pink, and that's just not who he is. So I think I'll like a pair of socks, or maybe I'll do like the Muscle Bora hat with this. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. So we'll see. But I love this great stash acquisition for me. Okay. And then when I was at stitches, I am always on the lookout for more masculine, um, yarn colors for my husband. He is like the most knit worthy person in my family. He loves it when I make him socks. He wears them all the time, wears them with dressy, with casual. He loves them. So at the very end, like one of the last booths that I went to, I felt like I finally scored <laughs> For the masculine colors um, and I wasn't really planning on getting two but it just worked it like I found two and I'm since I'm always on the lookout for them I just thought why not so this is yarn no Nouveau, I'm going to say um, on her bliss sock base which is 80 superwash merino 10 cashmere 10 nylon it's 400 yards for 100 grams and this is crescent and smoky hazel so these will be socks for my husband i may do like a hermione's every day i'm not too sure but i love these colors they are so soft and luxurious cannot wait to get these started and honestly i was going to start these after my super bright pair of socks here my wool and vinyl socks um, and then the sprig pattern came out and I'm getting sidetracked. So these will be socks for my husband, but he's not hurting for socks right now. So nor am I. But anyway, so yes, love, love this yarn. This is, I store my yarn all different kinds of ways in these. Sometimes if they're tall um, canisters, I will just store them upright but this one is a little bit smaller, so I thought I would store it like this. Okay, I think, that was loud, sorry. I think that this is the best. So, okay, look at this fun canister. Isn't that great? I love it. So this is also how I store them. These are from Azure Standard. It's a um, like kind of like a buying co-op, I guess, um, but they're one gallon jars, and then you buy the lids separately, but, they're food grade, so you can put food in here or yarn in here. 
So these I got on our yarn crawl um, for Noma Knits, or that's the name of the store is Noma Knits. And coincidentally, we did not know this when we were going there, but um, their store, everything in their store, or all yarn in their store was 20% off. And this yarn here is so luxurious. I was actually not going to get it because it was kind of pricey. And then I started doing the math in my head and with the 20% off, it was no more than anything else. So I am going to do a striped sweater with this. Look at, ah, oh, I love this. Love, 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 love this. So this is Moon Drake Co. This color palette is like, just speaks to me. I love, love, love this. Okay, so I don't know yet. I think I'm gonna do the sun sweater. Um, oh, I forget, the, I think it's the blue mouse, I think is who it is. Um, so I'm not too sure if I'm going to do like one whole color for the top and then kind of stripe throughout, maybe do thinner stripes, thicker stripes. I'm not too sure exactly how that stripe schematic is going to look yet, but I just know that I love these yarns together and they need to all go in a project together. So it is a sport weight yarn, 328 yards for 100 grams, and it's 100% superwash merino four ply moon drake yarn. So it feels like there's cashmere in here. There, it doesn't say there is, but that's what it feels like. So this is sand toffee, pink salt, and dark chocolate. I like every time I walk by this canister of yarn, like it just takes my breath away. I just love it so much. So I, and I don't think that this is going to be something that I cast on immediately because I do have so many other projects and I want to get some of those tees done. I, and I have two other sweaters that I really want to do as well. I don't know. And you know what? It's okay just to sit and be some eye candy for me <laughs> in my, my knitting space. So I love these, but that concludes my acquisitions. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, really. Like, that was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but I guess if I'm kind of resetting and whatnot, there you go. Um, but also, um, like I said, in the future, I'm hoping that these are shorter podcasts for me, for you guys. And this time I had so many acquisitions. I typically don't buy this much yarn. I gave myself permission to. How I buy yarn is if I have a project in mind for it, then I will go ahead and pick it up. Even if that project changes, totally okay. Um, but I just feel like in my head, I need to have an idea of how I'm going to use this yarn. Like with this, um, this Emma's yarn here, it was gonna be a sweater. And it didn't end up being a sweater, but I still, at least when I bought it, that's what I had in mind for it. Um, I don't know how other people buy yarn, but I just feel like I don't want to be wasteful. And I know I have a good yarn stash. I'm okay with that because right now, currently, we're able to afford that. Um, you know, we just never know what is going to be in the future. And so if I can't afford it, I won't pick up yarn. Um, but right now I am super happy with my stash and um, there's lots of possibilities. I don't feel like there's much waste in my stash. There's a lot in my stash. Not as much as some people, but um, it's a lot for me because I didn't really think that I would ever be somebody who has like this huge yarn stash. Um, but I feel like, I mean, it's workable for sure. So we'll see. I'm not really wanting to buy like any more yarn for the year. I just really want to revisit my stash. And I was um, watching another person's podcast and um, they were talking about working down their stash and sharing on their podcast, like a yarn that they used to love that they, when they bought it, they just loved it. 
and kind of rekindling that love again for it. And I love that idea. So I may work that in as well and share that with you guys. Um, you know, even if it's just for random sock knitting or whatever, but I feel like that's a really great way to look at our stash. Um, yeah, I feel like what I have bought here is pretty excessive, especially the 36 skeins of yarn that I bought for that blanket, but I didn't have that in my stash otherwise. Anyways, let me know below what you guys would like to see, um, how I can just be of service here to you guys in the YouTube community. Again, it helps me out a lot if you guys subscribe and share with your friends and go check me out on YouTube, my Etsy shop. Sorry, go check me out on Instagram and my Etsy shop. Really appreciate it, you guys. And I hope you guys all have a great day. I hope this was a nice relaxing time for you guys where you could just sit for a minute, take a breath, have a nice drink of something yummy and knit or crochet or make however you like to make. Thanks for watching, you guys. Until next time.